Hi, everybody. Welcome to the IADT um, Spotlight on the um, Portfolio Submissions. Um, today we have uh, Ronan, Ronan Omorhala and we have Fiona Snow, uh, who are going to uh, talk through um, the uh, Portfolio Submission. And we will also have Q&As from our Student Ambassadors. Um, we have two more um, shows on our sessions on one on two on tomorrow for graphic design and creative music production so don't forget to register for those of you who haven't already okay i'm going to hand over to ronan enjoy uh, hi everybody thanks for taking the time to listen in to us today uh, again my name is ronan the i'm the head of faculty of film art and creative technology so i look after a lot of the programs that require uh, portfolio applications and with me is fiona snow you say hi, hi fiona Hi, how are you? I'm a lecturer. Uh, I teach on a number of programmes in the faculty, um, mainly making things and how to make things and how to make things better and cooler. Uh, so I've assessed portfolios a number of years now, including a digital submission or assessment of portfolios last year. So hopefully we're going to be able to give uh, answer some of those questions and give a little insight into the process. Um, we'll stop at, at that various points and take questions as we go. So don't be afraid to um, pop in questions into the chat and stuff like that. Um, and I just, I'm going to have a presentation which I'm going to show everybody now. I think you should be able to see it there. Is that yep. okay for everyone? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I'll just, I'm going to fly through just a quick presentation about the faculty and just give you an overview just again about programs. I mean, you've probably been on some of these before. Uh, and forgive me if this is a repeat of something you've heard or seen before. Um, I would say from the beginning that a lot of information is available on the website. Um, details of um, individual programs requirements for portfolios. Um, there's a, a really good booklet that we've done. We've spent some time working on in terms of um, with the specific requirements for each program. So we're going to give you a bit of a general overview. There's also really good video content there. And then there's links to um, the digital portfolio platform where you'll have to uh, upload your portfolio. Uh, but hopefully we'll cover a lot of that. So if there's any questions, any anything, any, there's nothing, no such thing as a silly question. So please pop them into the questions and, and we'll stop at a couple of points and particularly at the end, we'll take uh, questions. But I'll just try and fly through a few bits uh, just to say uh, and just to talk a little bit about us and hopefully uh, it won't be too repetitious for you. But just again, I mean, it, it, it's, I think it's worth saying again that IDT is a place where you learn by doing. Um, we're interested in, particularly in our faculty, to, to help you to become a creative person, uh, not just with the skills to make things, but who can hopefully change the world for the better, even just in a little bit, little bit, uh, and contribute to the world in a meaningful way and, and hopefully have fun along the way. And that's something uh, I certainly believe in uh, greatly. Um, just to fight with my presentation here. Uh, no, I'm not doing that. Apologies there, just having trouble with the thing. So the faculty is about 1,600 uh, students between undergraduate and postgraduate. So it's a busy faculty. We've uh, and very much our roots are in sort of that art school kind of sensibility. There's three departments, Department of Design and Visual Arts, Film and Media and Technology and Psychology. So we really do cover an awful lot of different types of programs. But the, the core kind of philosophy is, is learning by doing and making, uh, whether it's projects in labs, uh, making physical or digital items or films or animations, whatever it might be. And uh, that's kind of who we are. Um, and you get a sense from the images, I hope, of, of the kind of atmosphere and environment that you'll find at IDT. It's an, a real pity you can't come and visit. Uh, we, we miss seeing people and being around people ourselves. Um, but as you can see, it's it's a kind of a very much a kind of a that sort of art schooly kind of vibe that 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 uh, that we all love so much. Um, all our degrees um, are just the same as any other degree anywhere else in the world, and we're part of the Bologna Agreement. So bulk of our degrees are at level A, so honours degrees, um, four years, 24 uh, credits, 240 figure pardon credits. Uh, and there's professional practice modules and, and, and placements and everything built into all those degrees. Uh, so they're the equivalent of anything anywhere in the country, if not the world. And a lot of our postgraduate studies then would be at level nine, so master's programs and stuff like that. So a broad range of programs. There you can see the National Film School from the outside, which is always a, a, an impressive building. Um, so we have a range of programs, obviously, that all require portfolios from graphic design, art, design for film, which is a combination of the old degrees in design for stage and screen and model making. And, and Fiona in particular, we'll talk a bit, a bit about that because it's a really interesting departure for us. It's, uh, it's bringing together all of those disciplines into one with a focus on, on getting you ready for the world of the screen arts generally from all sorts of aspects. 
Animation, of course, is something we've been very strong in for a long time. Our degree in photography now has really expanded and, and recognizes the whole broader discipline of photography, which includes everything through that you might look at through the lens and, and has moving image as much as anything else through throughout the degree and uh, throughout the, the degree. And is a real option for those of you who, who want to look as a uh, who are it's, it's going to be very hard to get into film this year. There's over 200 applicants for 20 places already. So it, it, it's a real potential for another avenue if you're interested in the in, in lens based media. Creative music production, Sonia mentioned that there is a really interesting degree if you're interested in the world of sound. And of course, our old BA in film and television has now been split to two separate degrees, a BA in film and a BA in television. But they're very much integrated and, and like 60% of the modules are shared. And of course, our new degree, Interaction and User Experience Design is a really exciting uh, degree as well if you're interested in the digital world of design um, and how we interact with the digital world. I'm going to pause there and uh, maybe just sorry and we'll just, just some of the key dates I suppose and uh, just in, I mentioned our portfolios are needed for all the programs in design and visual arts, film and media and interaction and user experience design specifically. The deadline is February the 1st which is what next Monday so if you haven't applied for those programs before that date any of those programs you won't be able to get in because it, it is very much the CAO system that dictates how this works as so you have to be uh, in uh, and registered or your choice registered in those programs by then. The deadline for portfolios is the 18th of March. Uh, that's if you're submitting a portfolio for assessment. So basically to get into any of our portfolio programs, you get up to 600 points for your portfolio and then it's your other points, whether it's your leaving certificate or or, or your recognized prior learning, or if you're in an FE college, or indeed if you're in a program abroad, and uh, there are equivalents of points that you're awarded on top of your portfolio score. And it's, th it's that combined score that gets you in uh, or otherwise into the program. And uh, there's another mode of entry, which is the virtual project date, which we'll talk about a little bit more now in a second. But again, you can choose to do a, a brief, which is available at the moment. You have to do a couple of pieces of work for that. And then you join us for a virtual project day on one of the days on the 15th, 16th, or 17th of February and do some work under supervision from our lecturers. And again, you will get a, an equivalent up to 600 points, same as the portfolio score for that as well. But I'll go into a little bit more detail on that now in a second. Um, I might let Fiona come in here now to talk a little bit about portfolios and what we're looking for in our portfolios. Thanks, Rona. Yeah, I think, um, you know, our portfolios are a really, really important part of, of how we get a great body of students in IEDT. And I think they have they have become more diverse over the years as well. You know, it used to be that we would see a lot of portfolios and it was kids who had done school at Leaving Cert, and, or sorry, art at Leaving Cert, and they sort of put their work together in a nice folder and they, they submitted it. And now we're seeing that creativity is, is manifesting in lots of different different ways for um, for so many potential applicants for us. And, and because of this, the portfolio has broadened in its ways, I suppose, of completing the portfolio, but the core remains the same. We want to see what you're interested in. We want to see how curious you are about the world. We love to see what it sort of inspires you, what makes you creative, why you want to pursue this as, as a, a thing to do for four years of your life. Um, it's great when portfolios work around a theme, you know, a, sketches, Go through to full work, whether that's you know digital work, physical work, two dimensional work, three dimensional work, the full gamut of it. Kind of seeing how you're thinking through ideas are one of the most sort of uh, useful things we can see in a portfolio because that gives us an insight into how you think about the world, and that's ultimately what we want. And um, you know we want to see that level of 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 drive, of energy, enthusiasm, and passion for you know what you're going to be bringing for yourself. You know why you want this level of uh, of education. Um, so that can that can take any number of different formats. It's you know it's it's long gone now that it's it's literally has to be a portfolio. And I think the digital jump we've all had to make in the last twelve months has kind of accelerated that. But but it's by no means unusual that we're we're looking at a broader range of work now that manifests in different ways. Um, so if you just want to go on to the next slide, there, Ronan. Um, so a few tips here. Uh, this first one is really important, okay? We don't need to see everything, okay? Selectivity is actually a really, really important skill. So, so by showing us, you know, your core, your favorite work, the things you're passionate about, the things you're most proud of, plus some of the supporting work that got you to that, showing us a few of those things as opposed to literally everything you've ever done is a really insightful. Um, so, you know, don't worry, you don't have to have a really packed portfolio. 
um, work that is clear, clean, obviously that, that matters, you know, and when we say clean, we don't mean, you know, if you've done some life, you've done some 60 second life drawing and it's covered in smudges and that's just part of the art, that's part of it. Um, but things that are, you know, photographed well, mounted well, well lit, uh, easy to see, it makes sense to us what we're seeing is very important. You know, think about telling the story of your work through your images. Um, work doesn't have to be finished, okay? Uh, you know, our, getting into first year in IEDT is just the beginning. It's not the end of a thing and we don't expect you to come fully rounded before you step in the door. Uh, work in progress is actually often more interesting for us because we can really see your process. So if you have something that you haven't quite got done, um, but you, you're passionate about it, that's absolutely fine. Include it and show us what, what is involved. Um, large work using photographs, I think, in specifically that refers to when we were looking at physical portfolios you know you didn't have to bring in gigantic things you could use an image of it all work this year will be photographed of course um you can include you know work you've done on a on a fe course you can include work you've done on a summer program work you've done in school work you've done on your own it can be a mix of these things it can be exclusively one of those things very often we're seeing a blend um you, we want like i said before you know what is your creativity you know, how are you reacting and responding to a theme? That's what we want to see is, is your unique response. Um, and then your sketchbooks are really insightful for us. Uh, digitally, sketchbooks are done great. If you if you can film you sort of flipping through a sketchbook, you know, you don't have to um, photograph every single page. If you can make a short film just on your phone, you know, turning the pages on your sketchbook, we'll get insight. If we want to stop and look at a page, we can pause the video. Um, it doesn't have to be a long video at all. That's a great way to include a sketchbook uh, digitally. Uh, and your CV as well, you know, give us a sense of, of who you are and what you do and what you like. Um, so yeah, that just sums it up there. You know, I don't want to necessarily read from the slides, um, but all of those things are important. Um, you know, Things, I think experimentation really jumps out at me there because that's important too. The, the essence of experimentation is the experiment. It's not that you have a perfect outcome from it. It's why you've asked the question and what sort of yeah, result you've got. So think about these things. It's not a rigid thing you have to put together, but there are at the same time, so hopefully some helpful sort of guidelines and structures that'll help you hone down the work um, and, and do it well. You can see there the link. You can also find it through the website to the portfolio guidelines which has a little bit of specifics for each program. Some programs are very specific, like film and animation have some very rigid things that they definitely are going to want to see, whereas other programs are, are a lot broader, you know, where they're going to say, listen, we want to see things within the following themes. We want to see you able to work in two dimensions and three dimensions and this kind of stuff. Um, so do make sure to take a look at the portfolio guidelines up on the website for the specifics of programs. So, um, sorry, you can go on to that one, uh, Ron, if you like. So this just, I might just jump. I might jump in there. There's a few questions coming in that I just will help oh, us sure. guide the what people are looking for, I suppose. And and I, I've something I forgot to mention is it is a, it is for the portfolio and even the project day. You'll be required to upload your content to our digital portfolio platform. And again, I, I'll share the the link to that now shortly. But that's again available. All all the information is is available in the portfolio guidelines section. Um, but the digital portfolio allows you to upload content to the site and it requires a CV and it will require a personal statement. But there are opportunities for you to tell your story of yourself and what you're interested in. And there's one question here from Daniel Byrne. Uh, can we include letters of recommendation from professionals? Absolutely. Um, you can do that and upload those. Um, you can even, uh, if it's video content, you can, uh, each of the uploads, uh, the maximum you can include is five megs per item, but that can be a, a PDF that's down resed with a bunch of pages. And uh, you can also include links to a few of your own personal websites. You don't have to have a website. I'm just saying you can. Um, also, if you have video content you want to include, you can include a, a Vimeo link or a, uh, a YouTube link. Just make sure they're not password protected. Uh, and it's better often if they're private because then they won't have ads. So it's just, it's better um, than we having to sit through whatever nonsense YouTube wants to sell us. And uh, so just be think, thinking about those kinds of things. And there's a question here from GABA about the project days. You can, um, how, how you, you'll get an email, anyone who's registered in the CAO, and uh, next week we'll get an email from admissions um, asking if they want to register for the virtual project days. And uh, so you'll get a, an email about that next week once the, the CAO data is in. And uh, so we won't get that until after February the 1st, basically. So then you'll get an email saying if you want to uh, register for that. 
and uh, what programs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, and then we we'll send you back details about what will be involved. It should you should also just bear in mind that um, you have to upload your content to the same platform that you would do for the portfolio. Um, and uh, so just familiarize yourself as, is with that platform. And you can use the content. Some people liked using the, the, the virtual project as a way of figuring out what was required of, of, a, of a portfolio and still submitted a portfolio after that. And you can use that stuff that you do in the project day in the portfolio if you want. Philip is asking about when the points requirements to get into film may be available. We won't know until you know. Um, we don't find that out until the uh, CAO results on the first um, the first release of numbers are, are the, uh, the phrase, I forget the phrase now at the minute, um, but later in August, basically, when that is, or whenever that happens, I don't know if there's going to be a predictive leaving this year or whatever. So it was late last, this last September, it was, it was later in September before we found out, but we won't know until then. I mean, last year it was about 950, I can't remember, somewhere around that. So um, given that there's fewer places, I'd imagine it'll be a little bit higher. Uh, is the portfolio Joe, due on the 18th of March? Yeah, go for it, Jack. Yeah, no, just uh, I'll just take over for some of these you've done uh, yeah. loads. Um, the, yes, the portfolio date of the 18th of March is for all of our courses that require portfolio. So if you're just submitting for one, like animation, it's the 18th. If you're submitting for all of them, it'll be the same. Uh, so that is the deadline for submission for every course for entry in September of, of 2021. Um, the next one, should I have finished pieces for the project day? Or should I start working on it and finish it on the 15th to the 17th? So the project day uh, is made up of two elements. So there's the sort of work we want you to do in advance in addition to what you will be given to do on the fifth on one day between the 15th and the 17th. So you don't have to attend three days on the 15th and 17th, you'll be assigned to a single day. Um, so that day will involve uh, two or three exercises that you have to do throughout the day sort of in uh, sort of under the instruction of lecturers in IEDT. Um, and in addition to that work, we want you to do the two pieces that are specified in the brief. I would say at this stage, you have loads of time. You know, you could absolutely start that brief. Uh, you know, we released it before Christmas, but honestly, you could start it today, you could start it next week, and um, you would still have time to take on th those pieces within the brief. And there's a good range of different media you can use within that brief as well. So I think go for it. Um, give it a go and listen, if you try and they're not quite finished and you've done the thing on the day, you can still also submit a portfolio and you'll be given the higher score of whichever one you submit. Uh, yeah, the video of sketchbooks, five minutes, possibly from a practical point of view, probably would be too long because it would exceed the the sort of the upload um, size, probably. I mean, you, there are alternatives, obviously you can, you can upload it to something else and link us to it. I think, think about your, think about us looking through it. I think It'd be quite hard to concentrate on a sketchbook for five minutes, you know, so I would say just sort of choose the best parts of your sketchbook or maybe even break it down into thematics. You know, you could have a one minute video of of some parts of a sketchbook and another one minute video of other parts that are related to different things and maybe break it down in that way. So it's easy for us to kind of really get the best of your work out of it. Um, but listen, give it a go. See how long it takes. And if it is five minutes, it's five minutes and we'll watch. I wonder. It, you know. I wonder I wonder, does the, the applicant mean five minute video for five sketchbooks? I wonder if that's a typo. Um, oh, could be. If you do a video for each sketchbook, I think it would be better, Good. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Just for simplicity's um, sake. And then you could title them or whatever it might be. Um, I'll see there, Alyssa, Sonia's got back to Alyssa about that. Um, so yeah, I don't know the specifics. Sonia's the best person to have uh, sent that question there about QQI grads in each course. Um, I, I don't know the specifics of how applications are dealt with in that manner. Um, can you submit two different portfolios on a different platform or for two different courses? So you just need to submit one portfolio. Um, so and and we'll know what courses you've applied for, um, and it'll be it'll be sort of split off into those courses. Um, you can do separate if, entries if you want as well. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose depending on what you apply for, that would make a lot of sense. You know, we would often see a lot of students might apply, for example, for you know, model making and design for stage and screen, which this year has been combined, obviously, or, you know, design for film and art. And they might have very similar portfolio content. But if you were to be applying for art and film, you might have two very different types of portfolios necessary. So you don't have to have a separate portfolio for each program, but it, you might want to. Um, 
And sorry, what should I look out for in creating a storyboard? Uh, Ronan, you might be the best person to take that one. <laughs> John, John Paul's question. Um, there. Yeah, what should you look out for? Well, storyboards um, would be more typically in the film degree, uh, but not so much in the television degree. I mean, there's again, I I, I direct you to the to the to the guidelines because there's kind of there's ex examples of things you could put in. There's, I mean, it kind of refers back to Fiona's question there. We will more than happily accept a film, uh, somebody applying for both film and television for, with the same portfolio. But there, we are going to be looking for slightly different things. So, I mean, you can help yourself a little bit by 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 pointing us in different directions. So, to film by its nature would be more directed at drama and scripted uh, content, whereas television would be more non-scripted, a factual type programming, if you like. So, storyboards go with drama. Um, drawings and stuff you can include as supporting material uh, and if you you know sketches and things like that as part of the production material if you're including them um but they they're supporting material rather than sort of stuff we're, we're, we're really looking out for but i suppose storyboards show us that your film that you put effort into planning your film and that you were thinking about it uh, and that's what's really uh, the, the the interesting bit about it does 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 Sketchbook go as a separate fragment of work or can I send its pages as several works? Fiona? Um, well, I, I I think what that's asking is, you know, my sketchbook has lots of different pieces of work in it. You know, you've kind of developed lots of different things through your sketchbook. Um, and yeah, I would just sort of, you know, put your sketchbook together in either, you know, a film or a series of scans and we'll be able to make sense of that. We'll know that, you know, this part, those pages of your sketchbook relate to that piece and those pages of your sketchbook relate to another piece. And um, so, yeah, I would I would kind of keep your sketchbook together in in one little video of your sketchbook, if possible. And you don't need to break it up for us too much unless it's just loads of content. You know, some people have incredibly voluminous sketchbooks. So if it's loads and loads and loads of content, you might want to break it up. But for most people, I think you can just leave it as a sketchbook and we'll understand that there's different projects explored through it. Um, uh, that next question, if you got the message for portfolio submission, are you registered? I don't know. Uh, is that related to? I don't know either. Yeah, it's a real one. I've contacted missions at IEDT.ie just to double check and con I, I, you need to be registered with the CAO. So that's the most important things. And, and then, then stuff then is we, then we're contacted by the CAO. So, um, I don't want to kind of say you are, you aren't uh, just double, triple, quadruple check is what I, I, I'd recommend. Yeah, if that message came, sorry for interrupting you. If that no, message yeah. came from the CAO, um, Emer, that, that means that you're registered. I mean, but um, just double check it, unless it came from admissions at IADT. But uh, yeah, just uh, just double, double check that um, before the 1st of February. Um, there's a good question here. Uh, can you have copyrighted music in a film portfolio? I think you probably mean like the soundtrack to something like that. That should be absolutely fine. Unless Ronan, you have specific desires one way or another around that. No, you can include it, just bearing in mind that it can't be published uh, and that it can. I mean, um, we all have different feelings on it. Like, I mean, I, it's hard to find a non-copyright, a copyright free good track. I mean, if you have a friend who has who's creating music and it's and it's you know it it's 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 definitely not a requirement there's no problem using copyright material but just bearing in mind that you can't publish it that's all um but i mean if you if you if you're creating a film and you you're using soundtracks and stuff like that just be just be mindful of that um that's there you you can't publish them that's the, the difficulty um sorry i've got questions here uh, that's right i've got them here what are the project days for ed uh, daisy that's a great question so the project day is an alternative to the portfolio so loads of applicants just submit a portfolio and that's the end of it. Um, but like I said at the beginning, you know, not everyone is doing art in school anymore and not everyone feels like their portfolio is exactly what they want it to be. So we have this alternative way of completing a body of work and that is the project day. Um, and the project day is made up of a brief, which is on the website now and was launched just before Christmas, that asks you to make two pieces of work uh, in advance. And then an attendance on the day of a project day, which will be uh, during the midterm break in February. So it'll either be on February 15th, 16th or 17th. Um, and then you complete work on that day. So you have work that's done live and work that's done in, in advance. And that body of work, the sort of the homework plus the project day participation, that makes up an alternative portfolio. Um, so the project days are not essential. 
uh, you can submit a portfolio and be done with it and move on and, and you're absolutely fine. Um, the portfolio is not essential. I think for all courses, apart from film and television, you can uh, you can try to get it. Uh, you can put a portfolio of work together through the project day mechanism, through the, the homework cross participation on the day, and that will give you um, enough work to submit for an application um, in a, in a uh, as an alternative to a portfolio. Uh, some people do both. So some people say, listen, I'm going to put my portfolio in and I'm going to do the project day. And we score both and you choose the higher score, basically. Or you, know, you don't choose the higher score, but you get given the higher score. Whichever one gets you a higher score is the score that goes ahead and gets added to your leading search or your RPL score or whatever uh, your other points are coming from. Um, so it's not essential. It's an alternative and you can do both if you want to. Um, um, yeah, I've just put a slide up there with some of the details there that Fiona was talking about. Just to bear in mind that the project day is not available for for film or television. Um, animation is included this year, but I mean again, we and I suppose I'd like to stress that you can do both or either, and the the, the portfolio is still the kind of the the the, the, the main way to get in. But the, the the project day is another way for you to to test the waters and see how you get on. And it worked well for some people last year, and a lot of people went that route and still submitted a portfolio so if you've been working on a portfolio for a couple of years um it'd be a shame not to still put it in but at the same time if you have time and if you're keen do try the the, the project day as well there's some dates there uh, and um again that that it's the same as the portfolio it's a maximum of 600 points uh, and we have a copy of the brief on, um oh, i've lost my, my way i don't know why i'm jumping around oops i think he was past it there you yeah. Go. So yeah, this is the brief that um, Fiona talked about there. You can see the themes that we're asking. So this is available online, but just to look at it. Um, do you want to talk about this, Fiona, a bit more? Yeah, absolutely. So, so this is the brief uh, that you have to have uh, tackled, basically. Tackle this brief creatively, uh, making two things um, before the, the day that you do, the project day that you'll come on and do uh, online with us. Uh, so you choose one theme. So the themes this year, I think they're the same as they were last year. They're homes or environments, identities or light, space and time. So there's massive scope within any of those for making any number of pieces of creative work. And again, these are for all of our uh, courses, apart from film and television, you can attempt entry through the project instead. Um, so then you have to choose two formats for your project. So these are going to be the final thing you make, okay? So you'll choose these themes, and this is where a notebook comes in, okay? So you choose the themes, you'll break them down, you'll sketch, you'll think, you'll, you'll manipulate, you'll play with things, you'll look at the world, you'll take photographs, you'll do whatever you do um, to make, you know, to, to think about what you wanna make. And then you're gonna say, okay, how am I gonna apply those? What am I going to make out of these? What am I going to work towards? So the format, you can choose two of any of them. Um, so there's an A1 sheet, just a large format piece of creative work, uh, a box. So the box you have to make yourself and it's a nine by nine by nine cube. It can be made in any material you like. You should think with the box about, you know, the outside and the inside, you know, with, with a box, you have 12 surfaces, actually, if you think about using outside and inside as well, cutting into it, opening in different ways, you know, thinking about how that might relate back to your theme. You can make a sort of an eight page little notebook magazine or, or zine or book or something like that. So that's two A2 pages that have been folded. So again, we're thinking there about front, back on all sides. What could you do with that sort of format that relates to your theme? You could make something like an animated GIF uh, or a meme or other um, sort of digitally manipulated image with that again, how are you going to do? How is it going to be interactive? How is it going to relate to your theme? And how is it going to show us the development of an idea? Um, a photo book, you know, which can be something that's going to have a sequence of, of images in it that are going to sort of present your theme, relate to your theme and show your final work and then a storyboard at the end. OK, so this storyboard would, would be the storyboard that would relate to animation. So if you wanted to try and get into animation through the project debrief, you would need to be doing the storyboard as one of your formats. Um, so this, again, is telling us a story. So the formats there, that's for your final work, your themes, you'll explore your themes through you know, like I say, you'll maybe make sketch models, you'll maybe do some drawing, you maybe do some sketching, you'll maybe do some digital work. And we want to see that work as well as you go. Um, and then there's a little bit more on the next page, I think. Um, and then, yeah, so there's some tips here, kind of like I just said. So again, this is on the website and there are some tips about how we want you to approach these things. You know, you want to think about how you're going to do your theme. How are you going to show us your process? You know, if you were to choose the GIF, for example, um, 
just showing us a gif with no context and not showing us where it came from and how you made it and what inspired you to do it that's not going to score very very well but if you show us something that includes you know sketches and work through screen grabs even about how you're going through things you testing this out on on people handing someone your phone seeing if they're delighted by it you know that whole story of something um that's what we want to see is is not just the final piece but how you've done it uh, so process is really important um, and then you want to show again sort of two things from the list below. So we definitely want to see your process. We definitely want to see how you did it. You know, have you been doing digital art in Blender? If so, take screen grabs as you go. Um, you could even just do up some little git, uh, some little, um, some little, uh, you know, freeze frames or whatever, kind of little animations showing us your process. Um, and then two other things that we want to want to see. We're going to want to see either your research. You know, how did you explore this thing? That doesn't mean you have to give us a, an essay. That means we want to see your visual research. You know, we want to see your, your drawings and, and the things you looked at and the things you explored. Um, your visual documentation of something. OK, so how you've documented is actually a very important skill for us and how you present your work. Um, your storytelling, you know, this could relate a lot back to the, to the other two as well. You know, give us, again, the story of what you've done, the story of what you're trying to achieve. Um, change it, you know, ways that you can completely modify your theme and, and break it and, and turn it on its head. Um, you know, so showing us something like that's going to show us a whole load of really interesting ways of looking at the world. Um, your opinion, super important. Who are you? You know, what's your opinion of this thing? What, what point of view are you bringing to something? I think, you know, we all probably have a very different opinion of the theme of home in January 2021 than we did in January 2020, you know, and that's an important element to bring into things. For example, if you were to choose a theme like this. Um, can you predict something? Are you making a bold statement about the future through your work? Um, and how, what would happen if you had to make it bigger? You know, so you so we want to see you tackling two of those plus definitely process in how you are documenting your work. Um, and so so that's kind of the the homework. OK, so it's a fun, creative task. And then you'll see the details there on the, the left hand side of the screen kind of summarize what would happen. Uh, when you're invited to the virtual project day. OK, so there will be a full day. There will be a briefing. There'll be exercises that need to be done throughout the day, uh, guided by the lecturing staff uh, in IEDT. Um, so that's the summary of it. But again, you can you can go back to all of that stuff uh, on the website. Um, will I carry on with the questions there, Ronan? Um, yeah, but what, I do go back to them. I just want to fly back here, if I may, because we mm -hmm. skipped over a lot of slides here. Oh, yeah, we did. Yeah. Um, um, and just, I mean, they're apropos nothing, but I mean, in terms of, you know, people will always be wondering, how do I upload the content to the, to the digital platform? And as I mentioned earlier, there's a CV is required. You're asked to do a, and somebody asked a question there when I remember, like for the art portfolio, do you need to do a personal statement? And everyone's asked to do a personal statement for all the portfolios. And it's a real opportunity for you to kind of talk about your passion and your interest in a given discipline or subject area. But here you can see different images or you know, taken of different pieces of work and how they're mounted. Or uh, uh, up, so these will be from uploads. So you'd be uploading JPEGs or TIFFs or, or GIFs. Or, I'm sorry, the TIFFs or, or PNGs. Sorry, of these kinds of files or PDFs for that matter of kind of images. So you can see the kind of way they're set out. They're physical, obviously drawings or notebooks and stuff like that. They're laid out at the table. They're reasonably well lit. And all of this you can do on your phone. And, and even a even an old Nokia would would be fine in terms of the standard of, of image that you're looking for. There's a fantastic three minute video on the on the portfolio website that talks you through how to do all this. So really do look at that because it's really clever video that was done by some of our uh, now Viscom, but uh, soon to be gra graphic design students. Uh, and it shows you how, how, how all that works. But you can see just again, just these are sketches, life drawings, um, different things. And they're just they're mounted and photographed um, very simply. But and, and then these will be the kind of uploads, if, if you like. Um, for a film student, it might be a script or it might be, um, I've talked uh, not in very great detail about those portfolios. We, we look for, for every film you include or every piece of video you include, we'll ask, ask you for a, 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 a critical analysis of the piece. So you write a piece about your film, what you did, not a huge amount, but just talk a little bit about the film, what you did well, what you didn't do so well and what you do again. Um, but it's, it's, there's no harm in thinking in those terms in terms of your own work. And your personal statement as well. Like, I mean, what? How do you feel about your work? What would you like? What kind of things would you like to explore? What's your dream of of doing? So you get a, you get a sense. And 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 video work you can include for art and for I'm sure for design for film as well. It, we're interested in your curiosity and the 
the odd little things around the world that you know the stuff that you see around us and and um and that you're trying to engage with that and and, and think about it if you like that's fair enough isn't it you know yeah absolutely yeah uh no 100 percent um uh, so i'll just i'll carry on with a couple of the questions here uh, I think Ronan has answered uh, Nadia's question there about the personal statement. Uh, Philip, you ask about uh, feedback. Um, no, so we don't give specific feedback on a portfolio until they've been submitted, uh, or until uh, and at any stage there is a they are scored. So every single portfolio and uh, every single application through the project day mechanism uh, is scored on a scoring sheet, um, and that'll give a rough score around four different categories about you know. Um, the creativity that we see, the relevance to the course, this kind of stuff. Um, but that's that's a numeric score. Um, we don't, I think we have no portfolio clinics um, coming up. Unfortunately not um, this year, no, we haven't given the, the you know, we, we have in the past where people could come in and should bring in their sort of the work in progress and get some feedback on it. But that really hasn't been possible in a, in a, in a digital context. We're kind of trying to do it this way this year. Um, it's one of the, the drawbacks of, of all of this. But, yeah. um, um certainly um um it, you know that yeah, I, I, go on sorry no i was just going to say i think it's one of those things we, we've lost a little bit because it used to be on open days people would rock up with a portfolio in progress and we'd be able to take a little look at it um you know and just kind of give give direction in one way or another so unfortunately we don't have a good option for that this year but i you know if you have a portfolio of work i mean i would encourage you to submit it and uh you know that's the best way to get it seen um, a question here from Fiona. Um, I think it's Fiona. Uh, uh, do we submit the work from the workshop days on a separate format or the format we choose from the project brief? Um, do, it'll be all the same. All will be uploaded to the same platform we use for the portfolios and it will all be digital. So it'll have to be. So even if you're creating a physical object, you'll have to photograph it so that we can see it. Yeah. Um, unless the question there is, do you submit it in terms of the, you know, the A1 sheet or the box or that kind of thing, the project day exercises will tell you on the day what format you're making your work in. But all of that work needs to be submitted by February the 19th to the same platform. So your, your work you've done in advance, your homework plus your project day work will all need to be submitted um, on the 19th of February. Um, I'm just showing yes, the video Holly, there. That's right. The website yeah. here, I'm showing it just briefly. That's just the the detail. There's the link there to the portfolio submission page. There's that video I told you about, um, and the guidelines about how to photograph the, the, for the digital portfolio for submission tips. There's a PDF there which is really handy for doing that. The portfolio guidelines booklet is there, and there's links to other video. Um, if you can stomach another 15 minutes of me, and um, there's a video there. So these guys are, are with us today. We'll hopefully get them in talking to us right now because I think we've done enough talking for a while. Um, but there's all lots of information there that you can uh, see. Yeah. Um, will I just, will I rummage through a few more of these? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Holly, your question there. Yes, you're correct. So you do the two different formats in one theme. Um, Hannah, no, a sketchbook is not considered a piece. Um, however, if there's something you really love in your sketchbook, make sure to photograph it and spotlight it. Um, but it typically would not be considered a piece of work. It is the, the thing that supports your work. Um, I haven't started my portfolio yet. It probably is too late to finish it at this stage. Yes. If you um, haven't done any work at all, like if you haven't done, if you've never made a piece of art, or if you've never made a film, but if you're just pulling together stuff you've already done and you've been making art for the past five years of your life or whatever it might be, pulling it together doesn't necessarily take that long. I don't know. It depends. Um, um, but it, it, it's hard to say. But if you've if you've never done any anything creative in your life until, until now, then then perhaps yeah. Um, okay, well, do we want to pass any of these questions over to the students, uh, Ronan, or? I need to get those guys in and we'll, we'll, we'll keep plowing ahead. Oshin Brennan, okay. would, how would I go about uploading three digital works on the portfolio? You know should I? be fine for That's... that. Um, we definitely had 3D works last year. Um, let, we'll need to double check the file formats that you can do. But I mean, if you're rendering them out, you know, so if, if you're doing, say, for example, a character in a T-pose and a turntable or something, you're going to be rendering that out as a little video. Uh, so that should be absolutely fine to upload. If it's uh, just, if it's stills of work, uh, again, that should be absolutely fine to upload as digital work. Uh, you wouldn't need to be uploading source files. Like we're not going to be looking for, you know, Max or Maya or Blender files or anything like that. It's going to be kind of the, the final work, uh, screen grabs, um, you know, rendered out JPEGs, 
file format diffs, that kind of stuff. Uh, you should be fine with all of that. If there's a specific problem with the file format, um, you could you could email the admissions office and they'll get the question to us. Um, for animation so and storyboards need to be in color. I don't think so. Not you necessarily. Be... No. I, mean, I, I mean, it's kind of storyboards are, are are just one element of what's. Have a look at the guidelines there for the animation. They're one of a number of things they look for. Um, but it's. I mean, it's it's. Um, the more, you know, the more, the more engaging, and maybe Zach would be best place to actually answer that question, actually, because I'm bluffing already. Zach, so welcome in. Uh, so we just we have Casper uh, from first year interaction UX design. We have Zach, who's second year animation, and Sir Shakiri, who's fourth year character design DSS. Um, and Zach, I might throw you in at the deep end in there. Are storyboards better in color? Do you think or not? Or um, I think the uh i did one in color and one just black and white um i think showing you it requires two so i think a variety would look good if you didn't have one colored in you've two black ones i would recommend rendering one out um as a piece for your portfolio cool thank you zach um how do you know if the portfolio was seen received um you will i assume get uh, some kind of receipt from admissions from us or and the, the the digital platform will generate a kind of a once you hit submit, uh, it will it will generate a kind of response. Uh, can uh, you change your place on the CAO after the deadline? There's change of mind, but that only works if you've already you applied. Can, you can, if you if you've applied for any course in IDT, any any um any of the portfolio programs, if so, so long as you've applied before the first of February, you can move it up and down the list. Um, so even if you put medicine in Galway first uh, and you put us 10th and if you suddenly get a change of heart and you want to come and do animation or whatever it may be, you can move them up and down. You can certainly move them up and down the list. But the problem with our programs is you have to have applied by the 1st of February. Um, but um, but you can move them up and down the list. as, as, th as so th You couldn't add one, but you could change their order. Uh, after, yes. So long as you've applied by the 1st of February. Uh, so my advice is my, give yourself so. options, even if you're... If you have any doubts, put it put down a few. I mean, you can always put, take them out as well, um, but you can't not you can't not apply if, if you can't apply if you haven't put them in. Uh, there is no project day for the film course. No, that uh, requires a full portfolio uh, as per the guidelines on the website. Um, what do I include in my CV? Um, I, I person as someone who looks at portfolios all the time, the more informal and creative they are, the better. Or sorry, and with the CVs in particular, um, you know, a Euro pass is 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 fine, it's grand. Um, but yeah, I mean, what we're looking for the, from the CV is an, a sense of you, I suppose, a little bit. Now you will have a personal statement as well, so you don't have to go bananas with your CV. Uh, do whatever causes you the least stress, I would say. If the prospect of a Euro pass CV, CV uh, sounds awful. You know, give us a little sense of you. If the prospect of giving us a sense of you sounds awful, then you know, just just format it down. Um, you know, it's just to see a bit of context about wh who you are, where you've been. Uh, I don't know. Do actually do any of our students? What, what, did you include a CV in your portfolio, Casper? Uh, I did, and it's actually funny you mentioned about the uh, personality aspect of it because uh, I actually, you know, I had a part-time job at the time, but it wasn't anything major. But I took time to actually describe of like what type of a worker or like collaborator in a team I'd be so like let's say my job actually involves some of the teamwork so you know my job was to kind of ensure everything was running smoothly and I was always like on the run doing a bit of this and that so I guess if you have any experience like that and it doesn't have to be a job it can be any projects you've done before if you kind of let them know what type of uh, collaborator you are that's a really really big point uh, as well uh, that I'm sure earns lots of points uh, when they're assessing it. Um. Well, thank um, you. Uh, can you use copyright music? We've answered that already. Yes, you can. Can you do both portfolio and project day and combine your points? No, you can't. I'm afraid it's one or the other, whichever is the greater. Yeah. Um, uh, Hannah, yes, you can have finished pieces and notebook work. We would like to see both finished pieces and sketchbook work. Saoirse, I don't know, do you have any memories for, from your portfolio? I know you're in fourth year now, so it probably feels like a lifetime ago um, of, you know, what kind of sketchbook work did you include at, versus kind of finished pieces? Is anything to mind for you? 
Um, yeah, so my portfolio centred around uh, the idea of metamorphism, which was a team that was given for my sixth year art leaving cert, and I did a, a PLC in the middle of that. So um, my notebooks comprised of a lot of research, conceptualization of mind maps, and then the portfolio had the like the actual amalgam amalgamation of the pieces. Um, so of course, a uh, notebook is good for sketches, but also um, even just like looking at artists or research, I was looking at the seven deadly sins and how it could manifest in people. Um, and then also using the word metamorphosis to explore different things like aging and just changing of time. So yeah, I think I think for, especially for the design degrees that the notebooks are almost just as important as the finished pieces to show your thought process, creativity and how you work. Um, which is just especially important to show how you work. Um, yeah, absolutely. So yeah. Great. Thank you, Saoirse. Um, I just saw so a follow up here question to the do both portfolio and project day and combine the points. Um, so obviously the question answer to that is no. And you then you contextualize and said your question was about film, television and photo. So just make sure of that you are aware that of those photography is the only one for which you can do a project day. There is no project day for film and television. Um, and again, it's either or points in terms of the portfolio. Um, Lily, I, if you received your application portfolio before February, you won't have been invited to submit your portfolio before February. Um, you should have registered on the CAO. Um, now, that's a separate organization to IADT. So I'm assuming that there's going to have been some kind of, you know, confirmation of registration with the CAO. You might want to follow up with the admissions office, but also with the CAO directly to ensure that uh, you've been put down there correctly on the CAO as an applicant. Um, do you get the score of the project day on the same day as the portfolio course? No, you don't. Um, no, the, the score for the project day will come out about two to three weeks after the project day. Portfolio scores at the moment, Ronan, I don't think we know, do we? Um, no, well, I mean, it, just after Easter. So um, the, they'll be submitted on the 18th. Hopefully we'll have them um, with you by Easter. Um, so you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. It depends on... It, um, uh, a bit on and we have to get them we'll have 10 days to get them assessed and um our process is basically at least a minimum of two people look at each portfolio um that's a minimum but and, and we're trying to ensure there's gender balance as well in all of the groups but often if there's uh if there's often there's more people work in threes as well sometimes um okay. and we spend at least 10 to 15 minutes on each portfolio going through all the different elements um but just the score we'd hope to get you'll you'll, de you'll have your score for the portfolio day before the submission deadline, at least for the for the of the 18th of March for the main portfolio, um, so you'll at least know uh, if you get 600 in the por portfolio day. I mean, by all means, put in a portfolio, but it certainly I think you'll have your 600, and and, and that would be uh, worth banking, and then you can focus on it. I mean, I do always caution people that it's hard to do a a really good leaving certificate and a really good portfolio in the one year, um, and it's I know I know how tricky it is. Your passion may be for animation or, or whatever area it might be, but trying to do both is always very tricky. Um, I suppose I might ask um, Zach that question. Was it difficult balancing the two, the portfolio and the? Um, the, the... Uh, I I had done. I came straight in from the leave insert, um, but I kind of had a foot in the door. I started my portfolio earlier, in fifth year, so I had a a bulk of work coming into sixth year, um, and I. I sort of let my teachers know that my portfolio is coming up and I let them know and I told them that uh, I wasn't going to be doing as much schoolwork and I asked them if I could have less or if they could understand and I'd come back and do it after I'd submitted. Um, my school was fine with it. They were like, yeah, sure, you do that. It's important. So I just worked on my portfolio. As soon as I was done, I went straight back to my schoolwork. I just studied way too much and um, many all-nighters, which I don't recommend. Um, but yeah, it was tough juggling the two, even starting in fifth year. So, but yeah, I, I it think it is actually worth pointing out um, because, you know, we have a lot of, I guess, untraditional pathways that our students take into IADT. You know, it's not at all rare, at all rare for uh, first year students to have done a couple of years on a PLC, a couple of years on a break, 
a couple of years on some other thing they decided they wanted to do all together or for them to be mature students you know we do have a large diversity of students that come in in first year and um, and i think you know in some ways actually on the programs i'm used to you know someone like zach is actually the rarity people coming straight in from leaving search tends to not be as common as you would find in a lot of other places so you know it is important to get that balance and um, and you know a lot of people sometimes they, they have to apply once or twice you know because we ask a lot of our 17 and 18 year olds um just in general so if you're not successful this year uh, you are by no means unusual if you have to give it another go or take a slightly different path or something like that uh, that's you, actually you, you, applied, you, you did a plc search didn't you yeah um especially seeing as the points are so high for many courses in iedt uh, combined with the portfolio and the leaving cert i felt it was really important for my leaving cert year to focus on my leaving cert to get the points i needed and then i took a year to do a plc in uh, theatrical and media makeup which was related to what i wanted to go into so to give like myself a taste as well before actually uh, applying to the cao and then putting together the portfolio well, I was doing art, so I already had like some pieces put together and painting was a big hobby of mine at the time as well. So by the time I was doing my PLC, it was kind of piecing together things I already had and then doing new things to put into it. But I think PLCs are brilliant and I absolutely would not pass them. I, I really, not even from what I learned from mine, but even taking the year as a college student, um, away from the secondary school setting and learning how to like time manage and find motivation outside of a structured secondary school environment was really really important and I feel like it really helped me going into my first year of IEDD. That's a really good point because um, a lot of our programs are really busy they're like um like four three four sometimes five days a week six days a week maybe even sometimes depending on the, on the pinch points and things like that so um, being able to to, to self motivate and manage your time and, and that kind of stuff is, is definitely important. Um, Sorry, Fiona, you well, were... there's a, no, it's just there's a specific question there about advice for film because it's so competitive. You might have a couple of tips. Um, okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> is, I'll get to that. Leah, which, uh, which one is that? No, sorry. It's the next one down. Do you have any specific advice for people applying for film since it's such a competitive course? Uh, tomorrow <laughs> there's a spotlight session for film, isn't there? Uh, no, we did that. that. Oh, no, sorry, you did that. No, I beg your pardon, you did that. We did that. There's a report. I'll come back. Um, photog photography is included in the project. I'll just say that's Leah first. Definitely photography is included, and, and we'd welcome that. Uh, Elena is asking specifically for film. Um, any specific advice? Um, look, myself and, and the course coordinator, Barry Dignam, did a, a, one of these, and you can look back and watch that if you want. And we, we go into some detail around the two programs, um, which have been split, but are very much interlocked and interconnected um uh a lot of it is is very much the same basic advice we've been giving here about creativity and inventiveness i mean we do look for a film we are looking for video content audiovisual content uh, as it is an audiovisual medium um but um so it is it it's, but it's 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 including that work uh in as kind of a rounded kind of way and showing that your passion for the subject um uh, and there are specific things you can include but that are listed in the portfolio guidelines like around uh, scripts and things for film, but for the television degree, that uh, might be more uh, proposals or ideas for television shows or, or journalistic work. Um, but specifically for the film program as well, um, it, it, it is very much around the quality of your storytelling. So we don't, we're not looking for videos about your pets or videos about uh, skateboarding or like skateboarding videos, people doing tricks. If you're doing a little documentary about your friend who's an amazing skateboarder, that's brilliant. But um, but I'm not interested really in in, in, in people doing little tricks wonderful as it is i'm sure um but that's not it's the kind of it's your ability to tell a story from beginning to end is the big thing so so while show reels are interesting again and, and you'll find this common threads throughout all our programs in like you know even for design for film like you know can you take all these disparate ideas and things you've done and and not everything has to be themed but it maybe take one or two themes that you do like Saoirse there talked about metamorphosis like I mean that's in her portfolio that seems like I'm, I'm intimidated by that and um, it's really you know that, that's really super thoughtful clever you know in terms of like uh, working on a theme and, 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 and creating work that comes out of that or um, so are there strands or things like that photography is a classic example that you know it's not just about your favorite pictures but can you take a thing like morning and take a series of images that tell express that idea or 
uh, or different kinds of things like that you're are you observing the world around you through through images and and the, having an eye is something that's really interesting as well from 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 multiple programs so so it's that it's that real creative spark really so we understand that you may not have the best camera and certainly in the last year it, you're not it's very unlikely that you've been able to make a a drama with your friends but could you do something at home could you do a little really interesting 90 90 second profile piece of a study of covid in in during a day or something like that or or something that that tells us that you that you can see that you're looking at the world around you just slightly differently like you know that it's not just um in a in a in a, in a two dimensional way but a more three dimensional way just think of the story you're trying to tell but i mean sorry i could go into I could go on about that for a while um but it it's it's complicated like you know but again look back at the at the at the film talk and there's a lot in that um, there's a specific question here about the format of the, the A2 pages folded with the eight sides. Um, yes, we would like it if you have used all eight sides. Uh, so I, I mean, I understand that the markers have done something to you there. Just keep in mind that other people will have used all eight sides. So if it's possible for you to revisit that um, and possibly uh, do it again, or or even just do those pages and to glue them on um, to the back so you, know, you can cover them up with something. Just that's worth keeping in mind. You know, we have asked there for all eight pages to be used if possible. Um, Before you again, go on there, Fiona, just from, Casper. Yeah. So just Casper um, is one of the few people with us who, who did both. He did the portfolio day last year and um, and the portfolio. Um, can you talk to us a little bit, Casper, just about the, the project day? And, and I know you you physically came into campus to do to the last bit. We'll be doing it virtually this year, but. How did you find it uh, compared to the portfolio? Yeah, uh, I mean, it was definitely way less daunting. Like, first of all, you had the brief to start with for the project day, whereas portfolio was kind of a free run. You could do whatever you wanted. So, you know, even to kind of get you started uh, with the brief, that's a, that's a big, big thing. And uh, just kind of touching on that uh, eight to eight pages format, uh, I've actually done that for my project day. And definitely using all eight sides, even in a creative way, as Fiona said, you know, even try to make like a very interesting cover for the first page. If you can't really fill up all eight, but seven, uh, that can be a great idea. Um, and yeah, just the whole experience on its own, kind of, you know, getting to talk to your possible future lectures was was really good. And, you know, meeting your potential classmates online as well. Um, not online, I mean, in the on campus uh, was great. Uh, so, so you know, it, those are another benefits of Project Day that you know might not necessarily be obvious, but they definitely help uh, you know in the long run, kind of going into college afterwards. Great, thank you. Um, thanks, Casper. Elisa is here and has a question about pre-recorded, copyrighted footage edited together and altered if it portrays a unique narrative, and if it's not the main video piece of the portfolio film. Yeah, that's fine. I mean. Um, like more and more people are doing things like documents. Look, look up. I mean, you just Google the idea of video essays, um, which are becoming a a real uh, format, if you like, in, in storytelling, where you know, using a mix of edited, pre-recorded, or copyrighted material, which you pull off the net, um, and but but you're altering it and adding graphics or doing different interesting things to it and constructing a narrative. So if you're constructing an interesting interesting narrative around it, then yes, that 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 could be really interesting. I mean, I'm not saying it. Again, it it's hard to tell in this kind of context because certainly um those kinds of pieces are are are, are more and more becoming interesting and, and a, a way of telling stories and particularly in this covid context um could be a really interesting way and and but th think about it in terms of that you're trying to say something that it, it, it's that narrative that there really is a story there that you're telling us but you're responding to a piece of art responding to an issue and uh, responding to a theme uh, and, and 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 constructing a narrative around it um i've seen some really interesting pieces which mix footage with um with um content from social media and all sorts of different things where people are they're using it as, as to construct a narrative is, is is really interesting but again it's 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 one of the many ways you could approach it uh, I'll just take this next one there. Um, yeah, you can absolutely upload your sketchbooks as PDF instead if you want to. We just know that for some people that's quite difficult. Um, so a video of a sketchbook is actually easier for some people to do. So either or, um, and again, or a mix, that's absolutely fine. Um, the next question in animation, if I have two videos instead of two, is that a big problem? I'm not sure if that's a typo there. Um, can I upload links as well for the portfolio? Yes, you can. Um, how do you show your process? Are, 
if video content links are going to be better really and um, zach you might be able to answer this one well how did you show your process in your portfolio um do you the um the process like we in my sketchbooks i had big finished pieces in the back of my portfolio of like character turnarounds and world design um but i had little sticky notes in my sketchbook saying this is this part of my portfolio so you can see in my sketchbooks through pages um how i developed my ideas and how the design changed and i sort of wrote little notes in and why i just decided to change the circle to a square or change the red or and um, so like you could see my thinking through sketchbooks and that's why i think they're really really useful but make sure you add notes in to tell them that this uh was for this piece in my portfolio okay. and so, um yeah. and uh casper or Sirsha, i mean not everyone does all drawn stuff for their portfolio so did you guys have anything three-dimensional or or video based in your portfolios and you know are there other ways of showing process that apart from sketches Would you like to go ahead or yeah. Uh, yeah, I I included I included a lot of different media um, because I like to kind of you know uh, dip my hand in a bit of everything. Uh, so I included photography to uh, convey the idea of change. Um, I included sculpture. I had a sculpture that I photographed and added in. I included a little bit of digital media such as. Um, digital uh, drawing um, as well as using that for a physical painting um, which is something that I was only experimenting with at the time but has become a big part of my practice now that's been nurtured by the lectures in IDT and um, so I think um, when I was at the design for film talk yesterday a student Alexandria was talking about using embroidery um, and actually using fabrics and she is a model making student so yeah there's there's multiple mediums that you can communicate through i know a lot of design for students screen students use a uh, digital collage in photoshop as well which is you know a really nice way of communicating thoughts and ideas without if you don't have the technical skills per se in drawing to actually communicate what you want to yeah brilliant thank you and casper how about you did you have other media in your portfolio yeah so uh, i actually broke the portfolio into sections and went uh, similar to Sersha actually I showed a bit of my uh, leaving cert artwork but not everything it was literally a very tiny section of my portfolio just kind of showing the process so initial sketches to like let's say a line of print or or you know that kind of exploring of topics and ideas um, then I did a bit of photography just because that was actually my original background but that wasn't the course I was applying for but that was kind of showing you know I, I set myself a brief and a theme and I tried to follow it in such and such a way. And that's like the kind of work I did uh, for this, you know. Uh, but then um, my course was kind of specific in a way of combining a bit of science and art. So being involved in a few science programs or competitions, you know, I also included a bit of that. So that was uh, not necessarily written pieces, but, but kind of, you know, showing exactly what I did probably through pictures and a few graphs. Uh, but again, that's probably just applicable to, to my course and not even uh, needed it that much. Uh, and then finally, I did some screen based work as well. Uh, so looking at applications and, and, and you know, kind of critically looking at the designs that were already there. So obviously you don't have to draw a screen. You can take a screenshot and, and you know, just kind of out of this, uh, put your own markings on top and, and perhaps make a little redesign if you want to. So, so there is not really a one way to do a portfolio. Uh, so you have all the mediums in the world to work with. Thanks, guys. I think what the, the really important thing for everyone on the call to take away from those, you know, really good feedback we've had from all three students there is they've shown us how they think about the world. Okay, they've shown us and they've 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 marked that off for us. You know, Zach saying he literally put post-it notes on things he really wanted us to see, you know, um, and that's what we want to get out of a portfolio. Not necessarily the post-it notes, but a sense of you and, and how you're dealing with something. I mean, if that means post-it notes, great. Um, but, you know, how you are relating to things, why you are wanting to do these things, that's an important, really important sense to get out and part of the process we like to see. Um, can you're a designer you... there's a lot of post-its in your future yeah yes absolutely <laughs> there, there will be post-its in your future on some of these programs 
Aaron Hallows has a question. Right there. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There's a <laughs> post-it note right there. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, sorry, Aaron's question there around the order. I think that must be about the order of programmes. Once you've applied, there is the change of mind date. I don't know when it is. Ronan, do you know the specifics? It's, oh, it's very late. It's like like it's May or June or even June. I can't remember. I'm not going to say because I, I get myself in trouble. But um, you can change the order once you've applied for a programme. Once, once before February the first, once you like apply for as many of them as you want, really, ultimately, and then to give yourself breathing room. But you can move the order around and you can uh, drop them, so to speak, if if it comes to it. Although we'd love to see you. Which I mean, I mean, one thing a colleague of ours used to say often um, is that. And I think that's one of the reasons why the Design for Film program has kind of come together like that, is that, you know, so much of our, 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 our what we do is about making and working with other people making um, and being inspired and, and conspiring with people to make things so that it's about bringing people together. Uh, so, you know, if you're interested in making stuff in whatever form, physical or digital or otherwise, um, come to IDT and, and, and you'll have a lot of fun. Um, okay. Holly has a question there about process. Can we send in videos of sketchbook pages to be used explore ideas and project day? Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, explore ideas for the project. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you you'll be able to do that. Yeah. Um, you'll have to turn them around quickly. Uh, the the submission deadline is the nineteenth of February, and project days will be happening on the fifteenth, sixteenth, and seventeenth. So you'll have to your turn process that. for the stuff on the brief. You could be able to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you can. Um, for the portfolio, um, would you take photos of your art arranged on the black A1 page like you would have done if it was physical or we just upload each piece? Yeah, just upload it. I mean, layout matters, but uh, you don't have to put it on a big A1 piece of black paper and pretend it's in a giant portfolio or even put it in a giant portfolio. So composition of your pieces matters, clarity of your images matters, but it does not have to be on an A1 piece of paper. Uh, lots of us are in houses that are probably too small to take a photograph of something on an A1 piece of paper. So uh, that would be fine. Um, Lily asks, should she upload a motivation letter? That that would be our, your personal statement, would be that kind of a thing, would be your uh, motivation around the programme and why you want to do what you're trying to do. And um, Casper, you would have done one of those. I don't know if uh, you, were, you were the first person to do the digital portfolio platform. Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, I, I found it to be a very uh, nice way of, again, adding another layer of who you are into the whole submission. and. Again, it's nothing to be stressed about. Just like literally sit down and do it. Just write whatever it comes to your mind to say about yourself to to us and IDT. And then of course read back over it and ed edit it out. But but you know, there's no point in overthinking and, and, and you know, it's literally a very loose thing. They're not looking for a formal uh, you know, they're not hiring you for, for a job. Like, you know, you're a student. So of course it's, it doesn't have to be formal, proper letter. Just just really make sure it, it just say it says who you are. Um, it's high question about high resolution. Um, just every upload needs to be can be, can be no greater than five megabytes, and you can have up to twenty five uploads of um, items. Now you can also include links or links to websites and all the rest of it where other content is housed. Um, but um, it is possible to have a high resolution image and, and still be under five megabytes. But you could also downrise them. We understand that you're working in, in, in restricted circumstances. So it can be like five or six PDFs that are linked together as, a, as one upload. So that's also possible. Um, but it, you know, it doesn't have to be high, super high resolution, super high data. Uh, we're not, that's not, not at all a requirement. Um, I should a project be presented on 10 big pages like a portfolio or two sketchbooks? Is, if that's the project day, but, uh, well, the project day, I mean, it doesn't have to be 10 big pages like a portfolio, but it, you do want both. We want to see sketchbooks and work. Um, so we, we do want both. If it Listen, if it's easier for some of you guys, because you know what a portfolio is and it's in your head and you want to lay it out like 10 big pages, by all means, go for it. Um, but it doesn't have to be like that. Um, do I do need, I need a, recommendation a recommendation letter? No. You don't need one. You can, you can include one, but you don't need them. Um, I see Sonia has answered this question with a link, this next one, Ronan, about DARE, cor dare courses or DARE eligible courses. Uh, so Daisy, they should see the link there that Sonia's put in the chat. Um, but if you if you get in contact with Sinead, uh, our access officer, she'll be able to help you with that. Um, 
and sorry, I've gone and collapsed the questions on myself there. Anastasia um, has a question here. I'd, pu I'd push on. Anastasia has a question here about creating a PowerPoint of images for the portfolio and exporting it as a PDF. Absolutely, you can. Just watch again, just the size of the of the file uh, and the layout. I mean, you, you you know, PowerPoint can be finicky, but that's just me. Um, just just use it as use it as a way of laying it out and organizing it. I don't know. If, uh, um, our students here would be familiar with that approach or, or um, you know it's fine it's absolutely fine of course it, um i mean often i think be deliberate in your mounting of pictures but remember the first thing you need to make sure is whatever you're presenting needs to be clear and easy for us to and remember we're going we're going through a couple of hundred of these so make it make it as easy as you can for us as assessors um uh that's not to say you can't be interesting and, and artistic and complex and and but 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 you know, get other people to look at it and, and people who are critical i mean for all the wor world one i wouldn't show them anything to my mother because she thinks everything i do is wonderful and, and that's not how sometimes um so so um and i'm not giving out about your mothers your mothers are all wonderful i'm sure but you know what i mean and um, find get as much advice as you possibly can and get as, as much uh, uh you know critical advice as you can and, and and from people and there's lots of people have put stuff up on 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 YouTube and around about their portfolios for different programs and different places. So you get ideas from them as well. Um, yeah, and, and don't forget, like I said at the very start, being selective is an important skill that we want to see through this. So it's not about loads of stuff. It's about great stuff. Um, um, Connor's asking about scouting, location scouting for his in his film portfolio. Um, it's not necessary, but it's, 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 I love seeing those kinds of things. I like seeing people who put in work in any context, if it's a film, if it's an animation, if it's a drawing or whatever, that I'd love to see your process, that you've thought this through, you've gone to the effort of looking at the location before you've gone there to film is is huge. I mean, because uh, it shows that you're, 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 you're really putting in some effort into, into, into doing it. So um, uh, ultimately, it's the story that we're looking at, but all of that helps as well, the, the backup to it. How would you recommend a personal statement be presented? <coughs> Again, it's a, it's a, it's just a box online when you sign into the port portfolio platform. Like next week, you should go to the portfolio platform, have a look, have a route around, and click on the buttons. Don't be afraid. Um, it, it doesn't it doesn't click in until you hit submit, and you and and you can play around with it until the, until the 18th of March. So I'd recommend starting early, starting getting used to it, so you're not caught out by it. Uh, Philip is a question here. Due to coronavirus regulations, students are restricted to, to the types of portfolios they can make. Can this play into the favour of students applying for film in terms of a lack of competition of place in the course? I doubt it, um, to be honest. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's all like every year it, it changes because the different people, different amounts of people are different. To, but people have been working on portfolios for years. And some people have, as, as Fiona mentioned earlier, some people are applying two and three times before they get in. Some people are lucky to get in the first time. So it, it varies, you know, um, uh, but and and I, I just think that it, using Corona to your advantage is the only thing you can do. That's all we can do at the moment. Um, and so far as like, how are you responding to that? And, and clever and interesting films filmed in that context, even if it's you and your phone at home, um, we, may stand out. I, it's very hard to give give that kind of advice in a general kind of context. Uh, Fiona has a problem with her headset. She can't hear, and we can't hear you either. Um, so I'll keep prattling on. And Daniel has a question here. Um, should we include full script storyboards or just spotlighted sample pages? You can include full script storyboards, and we will read full scripts as well. If there's a particular script you're proud of, show us that and talk about it. Write a, an analysis of it. Give us a little synopsis of the story, maybe. Uh, any, all of that, all that supporting material again shows that you've been that you've been thinking and, and working on it beforehand. For film, it's like what we suggest is that you 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 include your film and then you include all the material, supporting material that goes with the film and link it all together. So um, if you have the film, if you like, and then whether it's uh, the, the the production documents, your your research, your scripts, all the casting notes, whatever it might be, and that you write a critical analysis, include screen grabs from the Im from the pro uh, from the film, like little images that stand out. Why is this image important, or what what were you trying to do in this particular scene, or or what didn't work in the scene, or can you link it? Were you inspired by particular films? We all borrow from from other sources. Like, there's no problem in 
in in in tracking things or, or this i was really trying to get this effect or i was really trying to get this mood across or, or that kind of a thing and uh, and, and what, what was did you have a mood board beforehand did you do some visual research so all of that so link but link it to the film so take the film and and then create a world around it with all the supporting content what should i have in my portfolio in order to apply, apply for design for film i'm going to start with you Sirsha, on that one because i've been talking for long enough i mean what are the i mean design for film and uh, is an amalgamation of model making and the three dss programs so character uh, costume and uh, uh, and set design pr production design but it's more i'm fair fair enough in saying Sirsha, that it's about your creativity and your your interest in in creating worlds and characters and and all of that so and how you represent that in physical and digital form yeah yeah so as Ronan said the design for uh, film is an amalgamation of uh, 3d model making uh, costume production and character makeup design so i think in terms of portfolio uh, you can concentrate on the strand that you're most interested in it is a common year in first year and you can make that decision after first year um, I'm in particular character design so I did focus a lot on portraits, humans, faces, what makes us take a lot of research around that and um, you can include makeup if you want but the lecturers prefer if it isn't as necessarily makeup heavy um, and to include makeup if it works with your research and your design process rather than say a Halloween zipper face. They, they see a lot of that so yeah it's it's looking at research and um, looking at uh, designing for a space so it can be theater or for film um, looking at the time period and looking at what's necessary to make that world immersive and what will make the audience believe in it and that is an amalgamation of things and the reason that design for film was created is as a to make a world it's a it's a collaborative process so even I'm a character designer, but due to COVID and other things, my own personal interest, I've taught myself 3D sculpting and programs like Blender. And I'm actually quite jealous of the design for film program that I didn't actually get to go into it because um, it's it's really it's really fascinating um, and the resources that would have been available to me. But of course, I'm very well uh, supported by my lecturers at the moment. But it, it's fascinating. I think I probably would have ended up going down a, a modeling route have we given the option but yeah it's interesting even just that you know just um where you end up and and so much more now particularly even character i was talking about today with uh, one of the lecturers that character design that more and more characters are being created digitally and then even you're you having to create um costumes for digital characters uh, and that's becoming a thing in itself so that the worlds of the physical and the digital are, are very much molding together um, uh, there's a question here, Casper. I'm going to throw to you about what is UX design, user experience design, um, and Casper uh, is our yeah. is our UX design person. <laughs> That's a classic question, uh, and good luck trying to explain it to your families uh, whenever you take that course. I'm still struggling half a year after, <laughs> but basically, it's kind of looking at problems that people might have, be it services, apps, digital programs or even your airport, right? And doing research, trying to really define that problem and see what the pain points of users are. Uh, and after that, you go and design solutions for it using design process. So it's not like, oh, I don't like this app, I'm gonna make it better. By no means, you know, it's actually thinking about what our people need, who are we designing for, and then making a design. And again, it's not digital, so it's not fully digital. It's not only apps or websites. It, it can be like our next module after the one we are doing now is physical uh, interaction design, which is uh, the course is interaction and UX. And, and that's kind of looking at physical space and making objects and interacting with those objects. So it's a really, really broad course, kind of touching on psychology, visual basics, like all of that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, but it's a really good one. So I recommend it fully. <laughs> Um, no, I, I, I'm a big passionate supporter of UX design as well. I mean, it, it's, I mean, it's, it, the hint is kind of in the title, the user experience design and interaction design. And when you think about it, like we're interacting with this software, somebody designed this um, uh, and uh, somebody designed all different elements. I have some feedback. Around. 
Hi, Fiona. Um, um, can you guys hear me? We yeah. can hear you, yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I'm audio through my phone now. It, it told me my computer no longer has a, a sound card, so I, it kicks me off. Uh, so I'm back for now. Uh, apologies for that. You're more than fine. Um, so you were just talking about user experience design. So everything, the way we interact with the world is very much mm -hmm. digital now and digital in physical spaces as much as digital in digital spaces. So it's about how we how we make those designs better and work better for people all the time. And, and it's a vast, vast world. Uh, and, uh, and actually UX designers are highly sought after. Uh, so someday we'll all be working for Gasper, uh, I'm sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> when do you get the when do you get the result on when do you get the result of the portfolio? So the submission is the eighteenth, and it, it'll be like within two to three weeks of that. So you should know by the end of April. No later than the end of April. I mean, I, I'm late for that, but I, I, I'll just say that for the moment. Will I actually send you a confirmation of your registration? Um, the CAO will send you a confirmation of our registration of the registration for the CAO for the program, and then we get the details from them. So I don't know if we get. I don't know that process. So just, it's all about the CAO in November the first. Yeah. After that, we get into it. Go ahead, Fiona. That's a, just a really, really important point to bring home again, that you need to apply to the CAO first, okay? So registering for the, the online portfolio submission or the project date, all of that stuff is dependent on you going to cao.ie and applying for IADT courses through CAO before all of that. So just to make sure, because that's the thing that's up against the deadline of February 1st, which is Monday. Um, so, but you sh I would imagine you get an automatic registration that, uh, feedback uh, once you register for any of these things. Uh, the, CV, the CV? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, that's one of the requirements actually. Um, yeah, and then, okay, let's go on. May I use a PDF file to submit a finished video, a script, and a critique? So this kind of one out of 25 portfolio pieces. Uh, it, you don't want 25 of those. That is would be way too much work to do that times 25. Um, so don't look at the 25 uploads as a target for 25 gigantic pieces. You know, um, we'll, you can do 25 uploads. You can also link to things externally and all that kind of stuff. But again, think about putting a sort of a selective range of your work on there. Um, I, I suppose you could format everything together. You might have difficulty with uh, the size of it. Uh, if it includes the video in the PDF, embedded in the PDF and everything else, um, but you could certainly try, but you certainly don't need that times 25 or even that times 15. Um, you know, that would be a huge I amount of work. The, I imagine the PDF would be the script and the critique together and, and, and other supporting documents could possibly be one PDF. Possibly, but again, what, as, as Fiona mentioned, watch the size, but the video will, will tend to be a link in a separate, in a separate place. Um, Hannah, design for film, can do the project date. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can see, uh, yeah, it's just film and television that, that can't do the project day, that have to do a portfolio. Um, Lily is asking here, my work. I'm oh, sorry. We skipped over Lily here. Just I, If I have a, a CAO oh, account you. already and made my list, I just wait for February the 1st and it will be good or should I send it? I don't know. I, I don't know how the CAO <laughs> works. I, I'm going to have to ask them. <laughs> Um, so I, I, um, I think you have, I don't my know. Understand, yeah, Sonia is my best answer to that question, but my understanding is that yes, next week we'll get, uh, someone in admissions will get a list from CAO of everyone who's applied and then admissions will contact those people. Exactly. Once, once you've got your application in, your password, uh, on uh, cio.ie, uh, you're good to go. Uh, just always, it's good to check to make sure that they have the right email address for you. So go in and check your profile. Once your account is set up and you've paid, um, you're all good to go. So just make sure your portfolio restricted courses are on that time or in that ten. Okay. Uh, and yeah, if you're if you're Lily, if you're stuck or have any questions, contact uh, admissions at iedc.ie and they'll be able to help. Um, You've answered that, Fiona. Hannah is asking, yeah, design for film, you can yeah, do the project. Um, yeah. Um, and submitting my work, should I have an extra sheet for information? No, you don't need to, because you'll be submitting to a, port, a portal that'll have, you know, it'll have your identification on it. So you, you don't necessarily need a page that has your name or anything on it. 
um, uh, it's really as TV. competitive as film. Um, no, I mean, there's still a lot of people applying for it, but not as many as there are for film. That will change. Okay. I, I'm, my background is television. Um, you'll be I'm back very, on this uh, next one, Ronan, I think. I'm very stressed about having too much text in my film portfolio. I'm interested in how is there a perfect number of words. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know how to answer that. I mean, too many is definitely too many. Um, and, and you have to think of it in terms of layers, I think. So let's say you have a film and you're writing about that film. Like your um, critical analysis, you know, it's only, you're only talking about, gosh, you know, um, I'm not going to give you an account, but you know, five, six paragraphs. It's and you break it up into sections. Like it's kind of you know, what was good, what was bad, what would you do differently, what did you learn about the process. We just want to get a sense of you know. So, and you know, that's all really you should be writing about the film that's new. Everything else is supporting content. So stuff you you know the so it's, you know so you're you're showing us the script. You're showing us the 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 the, the sketches you may have done or, or, or location reports or whatever it might be, whatever supporting material you have to go with the film. So you're not actually, that's not an additional word count. You're not writing new stuff. The only new thing is that the, you're, you're writing about the process. Um, and you can tell us the story of making the film. You know, when did you, and, and, and it's very important, sorry, just with film for everybody, that you tell us what roles you had as part of the critical analysis. So if you directed it, talk to us about when did you first decide to make the film? How did you learn about it? What did you do? How did, you know, so, um, you know, so long as it, it, it's, it's easily approached and understood, we, we try and engage with as much of it as we possibly can. And we guarantee that we'll watch at least five minutes of content. Uh, but if, 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 you know, if we like what we see, we'll keep watching and trying. Because we want to help you. We want to find the best people and we want to help you get in. We do. Uh, and um, so we'll do our best. And there, just to say as well, from the film and television degrees, there is an interview process as well afterwards. So, um, people after Easter, there will be an interview. So we'll, you won't get your points as, as quickly as the other programs that don't have interviews, but we have interviews which will happen uh, in April. Um, but don't stress too much about having too much text. I mean, it, it, too much is probably too much. I know that's not very helpful. <laughs> uh, what next one again might be best for you. Sorry, was, could that be someone could that be part for someone that is to present on social media but hasn't directed a short movie? Um, that might work better for the television degree, maybe. Um, but it might be interesting. I, I, it's hard to tell, and without seeing the content itself, um, movie reviews and things like that are interesting and nice and see your your passion. But it, it, what we're looking for is it, we, we we would love to see a scene of some description that you're you're able to construct a narrative with pictures and sound. Yeah, is there a slide limit in the PDF? Not necessarily. Um, like there's a size limit, that five meg size. Um, but, you know, if, if you find yourself kind of, you know, a few dozen pages into your PDF, it might be time to think about it. And um, again, like, you know, show us the stuff you really want us to see. Keep in mind the full range of work you're, you're asking us to look at. You know, we don't necessarily have a time limit for looking at each portfolio for we look through the design and visual arts courses, but we do have a lot of portfolios to look at. So if something is, is you know, if we're scrolling eternally, um, you'll often gloss over your best work. So I don't have a specific page count. I don't think that's particularly useful, but uh, yeah, I'd say if you're, if you're getting if you're getting on, then if it's getting long in the tooth, uh, maybe just rein it back in or and something like that, uh, and keep it nice and succinct. Um, a question here for the students, um, if the, and I put my fingers in my ears now for this one. I want to ask the students if they are pleased with the university and how is it different and special compared to other schools. And please, students don't have to work off a script; they can say what they like. <laughs> I'll start with Sierra. Sure. Here's the longest. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I I absolutely adore IADT and I'm very, very glad I came here, especially for how niche and specialty the courses are. But um, aside from that, how collaborative the college is. So I have friends in animation and film, in photography, in uh, psychology, and the amount of stuff that I've been able to do from the college and the confidence I have gained. I feel the relationship we have with the lectures are almost collaborative. Um, and we work together. It's not really, there's not ever a power dynamic. And because the classes are so small, you do become friends with your lecturers. And I feel quite comfortable to come to them for anything. 
Um, yeah, we do work placement in third year, at least we did for design decision screen, and that just gained so much confidence. Um, even just the college giving us a lot of opportunities. I ended up doing um, showing some of my painted work in a gallery in first year. It was an event organised by the college. And then the summer after my second year, I created a production company with some friends um, and put on a puppet show in Monkstown. And it was something that we'd done just from the confidence that we'd gained from just two years in the college. Um, and then just from that, I've worked on multiple grad films and um, with film. So I have a vast portfolio and I just feel very confident. And given the COVID situation, the elephant in the room, um, I've actually, from the confidence and the skills, I've completely put my whole degree on its head. Um, so before I was very much specialised in prosthetics. Um, now I'm actually looking at 3D design, sculpting, and how that could work for prosthetics now. Um, so yeah, no, I genuinely, I really recommend IEDD. It's a small college, um, but that's the absolute best thing about it. Thank you. Uh, Zach, what about you next? Um, I've, I haven't got much to add to what Sir said. It's pretty much got everything. Um, I think it's a really great social uh, space and um, I absolutely love every lecture I have and uh, we have them all on first name basis so they're nearly friends and um, you can just chat with them they give you feedback and it's a really constructive environment and uh, no one's knocking you down it's very if you look for an opinion on something you know they're they won't just go oh like Rona said your your mom will just be like wow it's amazing say everything you make is amazing and uh, they'll give you something small um, and they'll be like, oh, you could chip away at that, work away at that. And animation, I know that the, without before the COVID and this whole lovely time, uh, in the studio, we could have, you could have just second years and third years in the same room. And you could just pop your head in and say, hey, can you give me a hand with this? Um, and it'd be very collaborative and you get to know lots of people and everyone's sort of a big community. And I have friends in loads of other courses too, um, around the campus, it's, it's a really friendly, social environment uh, and I, I wouldn't have picked anywhere else. Great, thank you. Casper. Yeah, so uh, I guess I had a somewhat limited experience uh, of on-campus life in IDT. I've been there maybe for like a month and a half tops, uh, but nevertheless, you know, even online uh, and being on campus only for such a short amount of time, uh, you know, most of our lecturers know the entire course by like our first names. So you're not just a number on the system that needs to be graded at each assignment. They actually see your whole progression uh, from day one till year four, you know. So that's another thing. Um, and as well as, you know, at least for, for those degrees that are a bit more industry focused, which most of them are, you know, you're really getting that most up to date industry level knowledge and skill set. Uh, so like, you know, we have few lectures that are uh, just like, you know, they are taking the break from the industry to teach us. So we are really up to date with everything, as well as, you know, getting very well renowned guest lectures to, to you know, talk to us. So, you know, only yesterday I had actually uh, the CEO of Torch Press, Emmett O'Neill, who is like responsible for the Lego Dupla Award and all of those like very successful apps. Um, just talking to us casually and, you know, we all had our cameras on and it was like 10 of us. Uh, so I, I really bet you don't get a, something like this anywhere else uh, in college. So it was really good. Wonderful. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Um, yeah. I mean, it, we're not very big. I mean, it, 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 I mean, we don't have a 50 meter swimming pool and stuff like that. I mean, there's that kind of thing. But I think I'd like to think we make up for it in terms of uh, just in terms of the um, just the friendliness of the place. And I, I, I speaking for myself, I miss being on campus. I like the, the COVID thing. Like that's our USB, I suppose, is in like I, I know Zach from around the animation studio and is, is that just people just come in to work and do their stuff and 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 there is that kind of an uh, atmosphere, you know, that I mean it's a bit grungy, uh, sometimes cold, and uh, the windows rattle a bit, but you know, I suppose it has, it has its charm as well. So uh, uh, we, miss, we miss it, I suppose. Um, so Daniel has a question here um, uh, about showing journalistic process for a television portfolio such as research. And a lot of that is about desk-based research, and, and so if you're doing a documentary, um, 
you should be able to show, I mean, you're starting with a blank sheet of paper and, and you're kind of finding your characters and interrogating them and you might have preliminary interviews or, or trying to figure out. And some of, and a lot of it is, I used to work in a sketchbook. I used to, when I worked in documentaries, I had a black notebook in my pocket. It turned into my phone and I use notes, but ideas pop into your head or, or things come in and you're trying to, you have your to-do lists and who you need to talk to and all the rest of it. So it's, 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 it can be slightly chaotic, but it, and it, and it, and, but it's, and, and post-its were in my world in television as well. You'd have ideas on the wall and you're trying to figure out, well, how does the narrative come together? Uh, how do I get from, from this point to, to that point at the end? So it's, it's, it's that kind of thing. So that can be a mixture of notebooks, um, research briefs, all sorts of little bits and pieces and, and, and stuff you've written as you're, as you're developing the stories. Uh, any advice for portfolio from the students? I think we've had a lot. I, 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 um, or have we? Is that fair? I don't know. We've, we've um, talked about process. I mean, I'm just conscious of the time now. We can keep, but I'll do a quick roundup for from everybody. Just very any on your top tips. Maybe starting again with Dirsha, what the top tips for your portfolio might be. Um, yeah, I think obviously the lectures and all, they're looking at a lot of portfolios. So maybe when you are laying out your work to think about how they will see it and how you will best be able to highlight yourself, your best work and how you work um, in almost like the most clean way as possible, just so they can absolutely see you as you are and not have to clutter and look through for it. And then aside from that, I personally, for me, pick a team um, and be able to expand from that and research from that. And if you are going into a design course, notebooks, 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 notebooks. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, and nothing else, uh, except for the, the CV, actually, the CV aspect. I think a lot of people overlook that. It's, it's really like the, the window through which lectures see you. So really do your best and sell yourself. You really want to look like a million dollars on that. So. Make sure you look good. And then I guess, yeah, so, you know, if you're applying for things like UX design or, or any kind of design courses, being able to uh, perhaps like, you know, identify a problem somewhere, uh, it doesn't have to be difficult or a wicked problem, like, I don't know, solving or hunger, but something small and being able to like focus on something and do some work from that, uh, or even if you have, you have some body of work, but still critically reflect on what, you do, what you've done. So like next time I would do this, or if I had more time, I'd do this, you know? So it shows that it shows that you think beyond just the flat portfolio pages, you know? That's another thing that really sets you apart from loads of applicants. Great, those are great tips, guys. Yeah, great. There's a few film related questions here, so I'll, I'll pursue these, Fiona. Um, I have a few mm -hmm. videos, films that could add to my portfolio, even if it's not in English. Of course, there's no problem. I mean, it, it can put on subtitles, even rough subtitles. It would help us just to understand. Um, but often, some of the best um, foreign language films, you can you can really you know the story just from watching what's happening. Um, can we send videos of sketchbooks for project day to show our process? Yes, you can. Um, drone video, something to show off in the film television program. A drone crash, even, and then the analysis of mistakes I made. Ooh, um, just to hope you've got a license to fly a drone. Um, we're not allowed. We're not allowed to fly drones on IDT because we don't have insurance to do it. Um, uh, so drone videos are interesting, but again, as part of something else, I'm more interested because it's about the story. So unless you're telling a story using only drone videos, um, uh, but you know, it, it's certainly something interesting in and of itself. I mean, they are beautiful pictures. That's why you see them everywhere now. Um, do you want to do that one person statement from Aaron? Yeah, uh, I know you don't have to write a person. Listen, if you wanted to do a quick little, you know, 30 seconds to your webcam and say, hi, this is me and this is what I love. That's absolutely fine. Um, if, if writing isn't your thing and, you know, that's not what you want to do and it's not how you, how you want to do it, that's absolutely fine. You can do it in another format. Um, Portfolio tips for the design. I can see Sonia's put the link in yesterday or to the session there that was that was yesterday. I think Sersha, you were on that, weren't you? Um, and 
yeah, so hopefully, I mean, take the time to look at that. Um, the top tips for the design for film course, I guess, would be to show us things in 2D, in 3D. Uh, you know, we want to see a bit of drawing. We're going to want to see your, like, like Saoirse described previously, you know, your interesting kind of journey along something, your path of inquiry along something. You know, it's going to attract students with a really broad range. So that could manifest in lots of different types of media as well. But we want to see that you're confident tackling your, your ideas and your problems. Um, in through different media and in different ways. And, and I think Sirsha's tip about a theme is really, really good. Um, yeah, so that should work. Um, is 10 minutes too long for finished film portfolio piece? Um, no, um, it, dep well, it depends. I mean, it, um, if it's a good 10 minutes, then no. If it's boring 10 minutes, then maybe. Um, <laughs> um, it, I know that seems maybe mean. I don't mean to be like that. It, what I'm trying, it, it's, um, uh, it was kind of a rule of thumb I had when I worked as a producer that you can always take time out of a film and it never makes it worse. But a tighter, you know, sometimes things need to breathe, of course, don't get me wrong. Um, but, you know, often we have a tendency, we all do, myself included, that you, oh, I love that scene because, you, you know, you'd spent so much time working on it and thinking it through and all the rest of it. But you have to take a step back and going, is, is, is every element of this really serving the story? Is it, or is it just getting in the way? Uh, and if it's getting in the way, then it's then it then it shouldn't be there. So that's that's the advice. So ten minutes is not too long for for a film, but it depends on on the content. You're welcome uh, for you no. Know, I'm hopeful this has been helpful. CV. Um, does a student um, hear about C? Yeah, uh, no. I mean, you don't need to tell us about your art experience in your CV. Uh, you know, kind of like Casper was saying earlier, like telling us. You know, you don't all have art experience for your CD. That's what your portfolio is for. So it's absolutely no problem. And mature students, we love having mature students in IADT. They really add to that dynamic um, and they're always welcome here. And we we, we, take, we have a good intake of them as well. So yeah, no, definitely uh, tell us about, you know, your, your life that you want to tell us about in your CD. It doesn't just have to be about uh, art or design or creative work that you've done. Um, that's right. I was, sorry, go ahead. I can say with CVs and things like that, you, like it, it, you're not applying for a job. So, it, but so telling the, it's using it as a way of telling the, your your story and your passion for a subject. So, if you're in a band or an art group or are you a scout leader, all these things show that you're able to work with other people, that you're creative, that you 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 all these things are interesting to us. Um. Yeah, Anastasia. Yeah, Sonia has answered that. You're correct. You do not have to upload the portfolio by Monday. The portfolio is uploaded by the 18th of March. Um, if you're doing the project day and the homework, that's uploaded by the 19th of February. So the deadlines in order are February 1st for the CAO through the CAO website. Then if you're doing project day and project day homework, um, you will do the project day on either February 15th, 16th or 17th and upload all of that work on February 19th. And then the portfolio is March the 18th. Um, 18th. So those are the dates. Yeah. Can the majority um, of the 75 pieces be taken from included sketchbooks? They can. Again, it's about your choices, your choose your best work uh, and, uh, and, and focus on them. Can you add your uh, junior Nicola, art project? Yeah. Yes. If, if you think it's really good and you love it. Yeah. Um, and How that's another thing we see because, oh, sorry, no, sorry. Just, just to say it's no problem with junior shirt because, other, yeah. yeah, sorry. <laughs> Um, not everyone does art after the junior cert. So, you know, some people will be including things from their junior cert and that's absolutely fine. I got a D in art in the junior cert, I remember that, so I would not include that, my stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> how long should your critical analysis be? Quality over quantity? You've answered your own question, Anastasia. Um, um, it's, I mean, it, 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 you don't have to write an epic essay. Um, it's just really that you, uh, that we see that you 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 you've taught about it and that you can step back from it and that you can see where where it's fallen down and and we understand that you may not have had the uh, good sound gear and for all the bill in your world your 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 favorite uncle can't act they generally can't unless they're an actor um so that you know it makes things more difficult so I, we understand that so but we need to know that you understand that that's the kind of the key to it uh, sorry, as all film stuff, guys. Should oh. we include a voiceover um, narrating and describing the works when reducing? Oh, that's an interesting one. Should we include yeah, a voiceover that, that can work really well. 
Yeah, sorry, I forgot about the line. Yeah, that works really well, Fiona. That that can be lovely. You don't have to even describe every single page, but every now and again, if you kind of pip in and tell us something, that I've seen that work really well. It's very effective. I like the idea of doing. We've talked about this as, as, as the idea of, of doing a personal statement as a video. Um, um, that's kind of an interesting idea that you do a kind of be careful with it in terms of, um, you know, that you overdo it. I think and and but uh, certainly a thirty second kind of hi, my name is, and I really love. There's not there's nothing really wrong with that at all. Um, if a student is accepted to the television course, could they still go on to work generally? Absolutely. But model making, um, UX and work in film. Um, the guy who's directing the latest Ang Angry Birds movie started out as a, as a, as a graphic designer in IDT. Um, name escapes me right now. So you don't know where your life starts and will bring and take you. Uh, my degree is in archaeology and Irish folklore. So, you know. You really don't. I mean, I'm tired of it's kind of a joke now at this point. I'm an anecdote, but it and I did my master's in politics, but to, to, to radio and documentary making. So that's that's how I got into the into that world. So and some of the best directors started out life as editors. So you don't you, you don't know. It's about getting your hands dirty, so to speak, uh, is really what it's all about. You're welcome, mm -hmm. Hila. Yeah. <laughs> because Ronan, you look like Taika Waititi's. I'd, I'd love to have his career. Um, thank you, Dorian. Um, a lot of students said that having a reel of your best of in film would be beneficial. Can I explain my filmmaking journey to the best and commented by myself? Yes, you can. It is not a requirement. A lot of people think you should include a show reel, and I don't know why that's out there. But it's definitely not a requirement because a showreel you can, unless you're specifically interested in editing or specifically interested in cinematography, um, you're you're like everyone can put their best bits together to, to a nice a music track. Um, even I could just about manage to edit that together reasonably well. Uh, and what again, I keep going back to this, what I'm more in, what we're always interested in is your your storytelling ability. Can you put together a story? Uh, and I and I keep referring to this every every talk I do. That the best piece of work I saw was an, a three-minute documentary about a deaf uh, hurler, uh, and it had no audio. It would had no like um, sync sound. It was just all atmosphere and um, uh, and text on screen, and it was beautiful. And it was all shot at dawn, and him just uh, out uh, just poking the ball over the over the bar. Now I'm I'm hurling is one of my passions, so uh, I, I bought that, and it just got I just I was passionate about it. But so you know it's it's. But it was it was, truly was a, a beautiful piece, uh, and it was very very simply done and, and just well crafted, like you know. So often the simplest things are the best things. And that's our last question. I think that's awesome. Okay. Super. Um, well, thank you very much. Um, just don't forget again, just to kind of last minute reminders. There'll be forty eight people still left with us who've stuck with us for the for the hour and forty seven minutes. And uh, thank you very much for sticking with us. All the information is on the website, the booklets, there's lots of links there. There's videos of me talking in our TV studios to Casper, Searsha, Zach, and another student. And there's another 18 minutes of me doing another masterclass about portfolios, giving more tips. Um, I, the one I recommend the most though is that three minute video on the on the portfolio website, which tells you about how to photograph your material, because it that is slightly intimidating. And, 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 and I, I, I'd say once you get registered in the CAO, have a play around with the portfolio website so you, you can get your head around the, the bits you can put up and, and how to, to best use it. And I just thanks again to Casper, Zach and Sirsha for giving us their time and Fiona, of course, as well. well thank you. And thank you, Sonia, for, uh, for fighting our fires in the background for us there. Yeah. No problem at all. So I'm going to end the webinar. Thank you, guys. Okay. Good luck. Thank you all very much. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.